The MLB was a movie this week, with heroes coming through in the biggest moments. Smash to center field. A soul car, no shot. Into the Padre pen. Rivals taking matters into their own hands. They and Siri exchanging some words, and here we go. Oh boy, that's not what you want to see. And here we go. And unsuspecting sources saving the day. And the beekeeper made his way, a grand entrance onto the field here at Chase Field. He was greeted by a standing ovation by the fans here waiting to see if this game would ever get into the books. This may have been the best week in Major League Baseball this season. Here's everything that happened in Week 5. Part 1, Last Weekend. Two of the hottest teams in baseball met up when the Cubs visited Fenway Park to play the Red Sox. In Game 1, Shoto Imanaga kept his ERA below 1 as he held the Red Sox to just one run in six innings. The offense contributed from top to bottom, giving the Cubs the edge. Game 2 was an offensive onslaught, with the Red Sox putting up an impressive 17 runs to send the series to a rubber match on Sunday. Boston would keep things moving, jumping to a 4-0 lead and look to ease to the win. After a Matt Mervis RBI in the 7th, Mike Talkman came up in the 8th with a chance to tie the game with one swing. Talkman hits one in the air, deep center field, going back to Ran. He looks up, it's gone! Mike Talkman ties up the game! He leaps in the air as he rounds second. In the ninth, Tyler O'Neill would put just enough on this one to give the Red Sox the game and the series. In another interleague series, Mookie Betts and Shohei Otani continued crushing baseballs as the Dodgers pulled into Toronto. On one, high fly ball, deep right field, Shohei in Toronto, into the bullpen. Boo that! A 1-0 lead for the Dodgers, number 7 for Otani. The Dodgers' number one offense in baseball was in full display in Game 1 when they put up 12 runs to take the opener. Tyler Glass now stepped to the mound and struck out nine Blue Jays en route to a series win and extended the Dodgers win streak to six games in game two. The White Sox won a seven game streak of their own, but the losing variety when they hosted the Rays. A team effort in game one broke the losing streak, but a quick Ray lead in game two made it look like Tampa was gonna even the series. Then Andrew Benatendi came up. Benatendi gets this one in the air. Right center, Rosarena, and it's gone! Andrew Benintendi, his first ball of the season, and he ties the game here in the fourth. The rest of the game was back and forth before heading to extra innings. With the tying run just 90 feet away in the 10th, it was Benintendi again with a chance to be the hero. The Sox would complete the sweep on Sunday, doubling the team's season win total in just one weekend. The new worst record in baseball belongs to the Marlins, who hosted the Nationals over the weekend. The Nats came into Miami and swept the Marlins in four games on the back of the entire lineup contributing. Former Reds top prospect Nick Senzel had a monster weekend, including a two-homer game Sunday to clinch the series win. C.J. Abrams continued his hot start, and veterans like Jesse Winker and Joey Manessas contributed as well. Across the country in San Diego, the Phillies were coming to town for a three-game series. The Phillies have one of the best top-of-the-rotations in baseball, and it was on full display when Aaron Nola and Ranger Suarez dominated in back-to-back -back games to take the series with ease. The bats would take over in Game 3 to secure the sweep, led by Bryson Stott who homered twice in Sunday's win. In another country, the Astros and Rockies met for the Mexico City Series. Maybe a trip outside of the U.S. was all the Astros needed to get going. Jordan Alvarez and co. stormed Rocky pitching to a tomb of 20 runs in two games. Jose Altuve continues to look reformed and is playing some of the best baseball of his career. A small step for certain for Houston, who still sits at the bottom of the AL West, but a step for sure. 
Back in the States, the Giants were hosting the Pirates to a three-game series. San Francisco has been quietly mediocre this season and are sitting at just below 500. In Game 1, left-handed rookie Kyle Harrison shut the Pirates out through six innings before the bullpen closed the door for the shutout. Late Pittsburgh heroics in Game 2 meant the series would be decided on Sunday. Young righties Jared Jones and Keaton Wynn went back and forth, but it was the Giants who broke through first. The Pirates fought back, but in the end, Giant closer Camilo Doval was able to shut the door for the series win. Finally, a potential World Series preview was on display when the AL Central's best Guardians took on the NL East's best Braves. The Guardians have been one of the sneakiest dominant teams in baseball this season and look to prove they were the real deal against the NL's best. On Friday, Chris Sale continued his run of good starts and the Braves were able to wear down Guardian pitching to grab a 6-1 win. In Game 2, neither pitcher would blink as Charlie Morton and Tanner Bybee kept the game scoreless through 7. Cleveland struck first, but the Braves were right behind them to tie it at 2 going into extra innings. A Josh Naylor double would prove to be enough as Nick Sandlin closed the door, sending the series decider to Game 3. The Guardians struck first again on Sunday, grabbing a 3-1 lead. The Braves scraped across two runs to tie it, which meant it would take extra innings once again to decide a winner. This time the Brave bullpen shut it down in the 10th before Austin Riley won the game and the series in the bottom half. Part 2, this week. After a slow start, the Twins had an under the radar 7 game win streak going as they headed to Chicago to play the White Sox. After losing Royce Lewis and Carlos Correa to injury, the Twins look to have another injury riddled year. But several members of the offense have stepped up and the team is finding ways to win games. Trevor Larnick is hitting near 400 to start the season, and Alex Kirilov has stepped up as a reliable leadoff man. Minnesota was able to sweep the Sox, extending their winning streak to 10 games with nearly every player contributing something in the sweep. Elsewhere in the AL Central, the Tigers were hosting the Cardinals for interleague play. Both teams were coming in off series wins, and both were looking to climb the ladder in their division. In Game 1, former Cardinal Jack Flaherty put on an absolute revenge tour, striking out 14 Cardinals in just 93 pitches. Another disappearing act for strike three. Okay, see you later. Career high, 14 punch outs for Jack Flaherty today. Somehow, St. Louis was able to weather the storm and mounted a ninth inning comeback off the best bullpen in baseball to steal Game 1. In Game 2, Detroit took all of their frustrations out on Cardinal pitching and put up 11 runs to even the series. On Wednesday, Kenta Maeda and the Tiger bullpen held the Cardinals to just one run and grabbed the series win. Meanwhile, the other Missouri team, the Royals, were in Toronto to face the Blue Jays. The Royals have managed to somewhat sustain their hot start and sit just two games back of the division lead in the Central. On the other side, a pretty tough early schedule has left the Blue Jays below 500 and in 4th place in the AL East. Justin Turner continued his hot start in Game 1 with a 2 homer game that helped Toronto just edge out the win. In Game 2, Cole Reagans was back in form, striking out 9 Blue Jays and only allowing 1 run to pick up the win. With the series on the line, veteran Seth Lugo matched Reagans' performance and held the Jays to just 2 hits in 7 innings. Michael Massey put the nail in the coffin with a three-run homer in the eighth, and KC took another series off of Toronto. In possibly the most unlikely turnaround of the season, the A's are playing some good baseball right now. They've won seven of their last ten and continue to cruise with a sweep of the Pirates this week. The pitching staff only allowed three runs total in the series. Free agent acquisitions Alex Wood and Ross Stripling did enough to secure the series sweep, and the bullpen actually looks pretty strong. Tyler Nevin is on a heater right now, and if things continue how they are, the A's may not finish last in the AL West this season. Speaking of being last in the AL West, the Astros were back in action, this time against a much tougher opponent in the Guardians. Game 1 was wild, with the Strohs jumping to an 8-3 lead before blowing it all to send the game to extra innings. Unlikely hero Victor Caratini hit a walk-off home run. to extend the mini Houston win streak. In Game 2, Stephen Kwan became a one-man wrecking crew. Kwan drove in two of the three Cleveland runs and iced the game with a diving catch double play in extra innings. In Game 3, the Astros had what is probably their most convincing win of the season against a good opponent. 
the entire lineup contributed, and the bullpen managed to actually get some outs to give the Astros a 4-in-1 week. Meanwhile in Seattle, the Mariners and Braves played a series that may have had the most playoff-like atmosphere of the year so far. In Game 1, Bryce Miller and Max Fried went toe-to-toe -to -toe, putting up 0-0. Zero after zero. Ozzie Albies finally got Atlanta on the board in a game that felt like one run could be enough to get the win. But Mitch Garver had other plans. That's the winning run. High drive left field. We've got a Mariners win. Mitch Garver out of the depths comes up huge. And the Mariners win this game 2-1. to one. In game two, Luis Castillo reminded everyone just how deadly this manor rotation might be as he delivered seven shutout innings before the bullpen closed the door in the ninth to clinch the series win. Despite 2023, the Orioles vs. Yankees matchup still feels like one of the most David vs. Goliath matchups in baseball. Baltimore is very good, no doubt, but they haven't had much if any star power over recent years. Despite winning over 100 games last season and having some of the most exciting young talent in baseball, Baltimore is still looked at as that underdog team and entered this series just one game back in the AL East. The Yankees' payroll more than triples the Orioles this season, so for Baltimore to win the division this year, it's going to take more than talent. Westburn, a base hit, maybe more than a base, all the way to the wall. That's going to score Mount Castle, that's going to score Santander, Westburn's going to get to third, triple trouble, and the Orioles have busted it open in the fifth. It's going to take more than teamwork. Henderson drills it, right field down the line, that's a gunner! Oh, that thing got out of here in a nanosecond! It's gonna take grit. He'll take it to the base, jump throw, got him! 3 ninth is 2-2. Swing and a miss, he got him! And the Orioles take their first series against the Yankees this season, winning 3 of 4.